It was about noon Friday early in June, school was out for the summer, and my sister Rebecca was having a very animated conversation on the phone. As it progressed, the conversation turned loud, heated, and nasty. I became very concerned for her hearing just half of what was being said. It wasn't that I was trying to eavesdrop, I am sure that the neighbors next door could plainly hear most of what was being said. I love my sister. No, that's not right. I mean, I really love my sister. Mom has raised us to be a close-knit family, and there is nothing I wouldn't do for my sister to help keep her happy. Sure, we fought as most brothers and sisters do, but if I had to choose between my best friends and my sister, there is really no choice, she wins hands down. I know my sister feels the same. Deep down, though getting her to admit it would be a chore. So, hearing her like this hurt me, just as much as it seemed to hurt her. Well, fine, Jeff. If that's the way you want it, just go ahead and go out with that bimbo Shelly on Friday. Just don't come back to me when she screws some other guy and you find yourself alone, Rebecca shouted into the phone. Rebecca threw the phone down on the table. It bounced off the table and fell to the floor. She started violently sobbing as she turned to the wall. I reckoned that Jeff had just dumped my sister and felt that she could use a hug and some understanding. I approached her and slipped my arm over her shoulder to give her a hug. Rebecca jerked away from my grasp, turned, and slapped me so hard that I wound up on the floor with my head bouncing as I landed. Lights flashed in my head. I felt a jolt of pain throughout my body and I was confused and disoriented, for how long I do not know. As the fog started to clear, I found myself still lying on the floor, with my head on my sister's lap, and she was sobbing frantically. I guess she was worried that she had seriously hurt me, but I just had my bell rung. As a matter of fact, I could definitely hear it still ringing. Paul. Paul. Say something. Are you okay? came out between her sobs. Don't worry sis. I'm a little woozy, but I think I'm okay. Did you get the number of that truck that hit me? I laughed. She pulled my head to her, it felt like she nearly ripped it off my shoulders, and she was suffocating me between her tits. If this had been any other girl, I would have been in heaven, but this was my sister. She finally lowered my head and I got a chance to breathe. I looked into her steel gray eyes and smiled up at her as she gently stroked my hair. I knew she didn't mean to hurt me, and hey, I wanted to show her that I still loved her. I sat upright on the floor, somewhat shakily, taking it easy. Rebecca just pulled me into a strong hug. I wrapped my arms around her and my head rested on her shoulder. She just rocked me gently there. I am so sorry Paul. I don't know what came over me. I shouldn't have lashed out at you like that. Please. Please forgive me, she sobbed into my ear. Jeff just broke up with me. We were supposed to go out to a movie tonight, but he dumped me for Shelly. This is just between me and you Paul don't tell mom. Jeff has been trying to get into my panties, if you know what I mean. He left me because I wouldn't let him. I thought he was different. If that's the case, I am proud of you sis. I know how hard it is. He was just a creep. I'm okay, no harm done, I forgive you. Her sobs started to subside, and she released her hug. I moved to a more comfortable sitting position on the floor, and looked at Rebecca. I was proud of my big sis. Still sitting back on her knees, she looked at me as a smile started to form on her face, but it was immediately replaced with a look of horror. Oh my gosh, what have I done? she said. Rebecca helped me up from the floor, and into her room, and had me sit in front of her vanity. She turned my head from looking at her to looking at the mirror, and there it was. I could see a big red welt in the shape of Rebecca's hand on the left side of my face. You could even see where her ring had left its impression. Oh boy, that's going to leave a mark sis. It will probably bruise up too from the looks of it. You always said my face could use some color, I chuckled. That brought some more sniffles from sis, and I felt bad for saying that. I pulled Rebecca down, and she sat next to me. Her face was a mess. Mascara was streaked all over the place. I even had several black blotches on my t-shirt where her face touched it as she cried. 
I took a tissue from her table and started to clean her up. This seemed to work and a small smile came to her face and she mouthed, thank you, to me. Rebecca then went about cleaning off what was left of her makeup and reapplying it. She wore as much makeup as mom would let her, which was pretty much anything, as long as she looked like a proper lady and not some street walker, as my mom would say. I have seen Rebecca and mom put on makeup before, but I had never watched this closely. As she went along she took time to explain to me what she is doing. What this does, what this thing is for, and what she is trying to achieve. It was easy to see that this was something she enjoyed doing. I found this part of femininity fascinating, and I paid rapt attention to her spiel. In no time at all, her face was back in shape. It was a face I liked. Both Rebecca and Mom are more attractive than most other girls I know. To me, they are both tens. We both turned and looked at each other when she finished. She looked gorgeous and she knew it. She looked at my face and touched the red welt. It still stung a little as she touched the welt on my face and said to me, I can cover the welt and it won't be as visible, if you would like, sure, I said, why not? She opened one bottle and took a cotton pad, wet it, and wiped my face. It was cold and wet and made my face tingle. She wiped my forehead, cheeks, nose, jaw, and down my throat, re-wetting the pad occasionally. She said it was a cleanser. The pad was dirty when she discarded it. I would not have believed that my face was so dirty. I thought I kept up myself pretty clean. At least cleaner than most boys my age. From another bottle, she poured a creamy lotion in her hand and rubbed her hands together and then rubbed my face. It was a moisturizer that helped keep the skin smooth and soft she told me. It felt soothing to my skin as it was applied. It felt really good. She produced a tube she called a concealer, shaped sort of like a lipstick. It was a couple of shades lighter than my own skin, and she rubbed it into my face where the welt was. I looked. I could still see the welt, but it was not as obvious. She bit her lip for a second as if thinking, and finally she picked up a bottle of foundation. Using a foam sponge, she lightly dabbed it over my whole face, and then blended it together down through my throat. When she finished, I turned to face the mirror, and what I saw was my face, and it had a healthier glow to it. It was hard to tell that I had makeup on except for the fact that my skin looked so good, a condition you don't see on many boys of any age. You could still see where the ring on her hand had hit me, but just barely. It was 4 p.m. and mom was not due home till nearly 6.30 p.m. so we went down to the living room and watched the TV. My sister was being uncommonly nice to me, and I really appreciated it. We talked for a while. Rebecca surprised me with her candor. It was almost like she was treating me as her girlfriend. She then asked me if I would like to go to a movie with her. Since Jeff had dumped her, she had nothing planned for a Friday night. This was a big shock to my system, that she was willing to spend Friday night with her brother instead of her girlfriends. I said, sure, why not? That was when she told me, with a mischievous grin on her face. There might be one problem. With that foundation on, you don't look like a girl, but you sure don't look like most boys. Would you mind if I made you look more like a girl? I am sure I blushed, my face felt so hot. I hesitated answering her for several seconds. I had never thought about trying to look like a girl before, it just had never come to my mind. What was even stranger was that I was actually considering it. You could have knocked me over with a feather, when the next words out of my mouth were, I think I might like that, but only if I can look convincing as girl. Rebecca giggled with glee as she took my hand, and dragged me to the bathroom she shared with mom. She kissed me on my cheek, leaving a lipstick print on my face, and told me to strip all my clothes off. I complained about Rebecca being there. Don't be shy now, little brother, she said, I have seen you in the buff before. You don't have anything I haven't seen before, and besides you're gonna need my help if we are going to pull this off. Sis stepped out for a minute while I took my clothes off, and reappeared as I stood there naked, my hands covering my privates. She then began to cover my arms, back, chest, underarms, legs and my butt with a smelly gunk. I was wondering what was going on. Sis told me, 
that while I was not a particularly hairy guy, my arm and leg hair stood out. No girl would go out like that, and this is a depilatory cream that will take off your hair and leave the skin smooth. She had me stand there like a scarecrow for about fifteen minutes, while she disappeared with my clothes. My skin tingled and then after a few minutes it started to burn slightly. Sis started the shower and had me step in and rinse off. I took a bath cloth and rubbed the gunk off along with my hair, which went down the drain. I then had to shave a few persistent hairs off. I was then instructed to wash my hair using the shampoo and conditioner that mom and sis used on their hair. I then stepped out of the shower where I was patted dry, not rubbed dry, with a towel, and was handed the first pair of panties I have ever knowingly worn. They were a pair of lacy powder blue satin bikini panties. They looked impossibly small, but fit reasonably well except for one key fact. Sis told me to tuck my equipment between my legs. After a few seconds and a little pain I had managed to pack the jewels and plumbing away. Sis pulled my panties up tight, which seemed to keep everything in place. I was helped into a short, peach-colored, satin robe, and my hair was wrapped in a towel while I was led back to Sis's vanity. My hair was combed and blown dry, while I sat there as patiently as possible. The way it was cut, my hair was just too short to style into a reasonably feminine hairstyle. I thought I was out of this mess, but leave it to a determined sister to find a way. She went to mom's room, and in seconds, returned with a wig I don't ever remember seeing. It was a close match to mom's hair color and mine also. Sis combed my hair back and used bobby pins to keep it back, out of the way. She then eased the wig over my head. The tresses fell over my shoulders tickling me. I had never worn my hair long before, but the effect it had was stunning. It was then, I knew I was going to look great. A little adhesive was used at several points on my head, and Rebecca was satisfied to brush it in place. My fingernails and toenails were polished in a cotton candy pink, and things started happening fast as Sis did my makeup. She didn't bother with explanations, she just concentrated on her artistry. I learned then, how much artistry girls put into doing their makeup. It was like she was doing a serious work of art, not like a kid using finger paints. I also learned that less was more in makeup. Next, Sis went to her dresser and returned with two mounds of flesh in her hands. She confided to me that mom had bought her some breast forms when she had not bloomed as fast as some of her friends, something I never knew about. Some adhesive was applied to the back of one, and it was carefully positioned on my chest. I held it in place while she did the same with the second. It was a strange sight. There I was, looking like a girl holding her breasts, like she was afraid they would fall off, as apt a description as any. After five minutes, I had the breast forms sequestered into a bra that matched my panties. Sis told me that I wore a 32B bra, a size 5 panty, a small top and a size 5 piece skirt, as if I would need this information for future reference. I was amazed by all this. My waist was then trapped in a contraption she called a waist nipper. A camisole appeared over my head and I raised my arms as it drifted down my body caressing my skin in its softness. It was like I was being seduced. Sis then instructed me on how to put on a pair of black sheer pantyhose. The feel of the nylon and spandex is hard to describe but to say the least, it was intoxicating. Another device of torture that followed was a padded girdle that as she said, added curves in the appropriate places, and for the last piece of undies came a very lacy half-slip. As I looked in the mirror, I had no doubt I was looking at a teenage girl. Sis then brought a white sheer silk blouse that buttoned in the back with a lot of small pearl-shaped buttons. It had a high ruffled collar, the sleeves were puffed some at the shoulders and bloused out down to a tight-fitted cuff that had four buttons on each cuff. I was sure this was one of her sexiest blouses. She was going whole hog on dressing me. Next, I put on a black suede miniskirt that just covered the half slip. The hips fit tight but the waist was very tight. She tucked the blouse in before buttoning the waist and zipping the skirt. She then tried a pair of her shoes on my feet but I was out of luck. It felt like she was trying to fit a Hallstein in a training bra. I didn't forget how determined Sis was though. She ran off to mom's room and came back with a pair of black suede open toed slingback sandals with a four-inch heel. They were tight and my toes and heels hung off a little. 
Sis then had me walk around in them it took about 15 minutes before I felt comfortable somewhat in them. Sis used this time to change herself and to give directions and encouragement to me. I was very wobbly at first but started to get the hang of them by the time Rebecca was dressed. I just had to remember to step one foot in front of the other, taking shorter steps and swinging my hips a little as I walked did help. I then had to practice sitting down smoothing my skirt beneath me and standing up, keeping my knees together and crossing my legs so as to not flash my panty, holding my hands closer to my side when walking, a purse she handed me that matched my outfit helped in that. My low alto voice fitted well, with just a little help, though I had to work to keep it from being too sultry. Although before today people never saw me as feminine, I reeked of it today. I reached up and brushed my hair back lightly with my hand and struck a pose and blew a kiss to Rebecca. She had to steady herself and started to giggle, before hugging me and giving me a light peck on my cheek. We both got a shot of perfume, obsession I believe it was. You're incredible, she said as she put a lipstick, mascara, tampons, like I really need them, and a compact in my purse and hers as well, I think I have created a monster. Yeah Frankenstein's monster, baby and don't you forget it, as I blew her another kiss. Sis led me out of her room and helped down the stairs so I would not break my neck into her car in the garage. She opened the passenger side door and showed me how to sit down and stand up in a car. She had me practice several times and critiqued me as I did. It did not hit me till she opened the garage door that I was actually going out into the world dressed as a girl. I don't know what I had been thinking earlier. She had made it so much fun dressing earlier and it felt so good being dressed, and I never really thought she could make me look so good, but as we started to back out of the garage it felt like there was a ton of bricks in my stomach. She must have seen the worry on my face and said, Don't worry you look fine. No, one would ever guess you're not what you look like Paula that was the first time I had ever been referred to in the feminine form. All she did was add an A to the end of my name and now I was a girl. She talked with me as we drove, if I didn't respond or engage her in conversation she would elbow me. She would talk about things we had never talked about before. She wanted to know what I thought of my clothes and her clothes, I found out that, I like them, was not enough. She talked about boys I knew and asked me what I thought of them. We talked about makeup and how she'd done this and done that. She was trying to teach me to talk as a girl and about matters that girls talk about, using words girls use, and the manner that girls talk to each other. Before long I was chatting with her if not comfortably, at least in a girlish manner. I looked over at her at one traffic stop and she had a big grin on her face. One more thing she told me, look at who is talking or who you're talking to, not like you're staring or gawking at them, but like what they are saying to you and what you say to them really matters to you. Don't feign attention either, girls pick up on things like that and will check you in a heartbeat. If you learn one thing about girls today brother, if you learn to communicate to girls as a girl does you will be way ahead of other guys. Girls love to talk and be talked to as equals. When we talk with each other, it may sound zany to others, but to us the act of communicating is important. I had not noticed, but for a lot of the time we were driving in circles near a mall we were headed to for the movie. We parked in the lot and I was reminded by Rebecca of our lessons on exiting a car and reminded to take my purse, then we were off to the lion's den of the mall. I set a deliberate pace as I walked and Rebecca corrected me to a leisurely pace, saying we are not in a race girl. As we walked, I could not help but notice the attention we were receiving. I remembered to turn my head slightly so I could see Rebecca as I mentioned this to her. I also mentioned to her how wonderful the silks and nylons felt as we walked. This drew a giggle from her which caused me to giggle. She told me that the attention we were receiving was we were two hot-looking babes entering a hunting ground, girl. I was still a little stiff and ungainly but she told me if anybody notices I could blame the heels I was wearing, after all not many girls our age wear four-inch heels. We entered the mall and walked around window shopping. We passed some clothing stores that were too mature and stopped in front of some teen fashion stores and talked about the clothes that they displayed. I was following Rebecca's lead and not paying attention to where we were going when we wandered into a lingerie shop. That is what I get from not paying attention to where we were going. I tensed up and was about to bolt from the store when Rebecca grabbed my elbow in what felt like a vice grip and whispered in my ear. Relax Paula we are okay, 
Nobody here thinks that you don't belong here believe me. I was not comfortable but I did relax. We moved through the store looking at various items and both of us commenting on them, like what do you think about this, oh those are adorable. I realized I made a mistake when I saw a beautiful bra and panty set and said, I really like those. They were a yellow silk and lace, with cute flowers embroidered throughout. Rebecca found a set in a 32B and one in 34B which I gathered was her size. A sales lady came over about that time and said that there was a nightie that matched them also. She asked if we would like to try the bra and nightie on. Rebecca volunteered that, we would like that very much. The sales lady went to find the matching nighties. We were then led to the changing rooms. Rebecca joined me in one and helped me remove my blouse, skirt, half-slip and bra and into the new bra and nightie and then she did the same. The feel was exquisite but I could not figure out why I needed them. I did not plan to dress up again. I was pushed out of the changing room by Rebecca to where a full-length mirror stood. The nightie came down to a mid-thigh and I adored it, standing side by side it was easy to tell we were sisters. Where did that thought come from? The sales lady came up behind us and told us how lovely we were. She checked the fit of the nighties and pronounced them a good choice. We changed back to our clothes and Rebecca paid for our selections, and we left the store with our bags. I was shocked again though when Rebecca pulled me into a portrait photography studio. It was not busy and we were immediately taken in. Rebecca told me to just trust her and to watch her as her pictures were taken. After countless pictures were taken, I was told to sit in front of the camera. Rebecca motioned for me to smile. It took a few poses before I loosened up but I started to have fun. Half blinded by the strobes, I didn't know how many pictures of me were taken, I started to get up to leave when it seemed he was finished with me. That was not to be as Rebecca was sent back and we were posed together for quite a few shots including some full-length shots back to back and facing each other at an angle. Rebecca paid $85 for three packages of photos and was told that she could pick them up next Friday. I was shocked. What are you thinking two of those packages we will never be able to use? Trust me Paula. I am not out to hurt you or to blackmail you. I think you might like them when you see them. I sure want them if nobody else does. I liked taking pictures with my new little sister. I just want you to know Paula I love you and I know you love me too. We finally made our way to the theater, just in time for the 8 p.m. showing of some chick flick. We got two Cokes and a large popcorn and took our seats. I really tried to hate it there were no car chases or crashes, nobody getting blown up or shot, no blood or violence and in the end the girl got the guy instead of the obverse. I had to admit the acting was better. It actually had a story plot. There were times we laughed and giggled and a couple of times tears formed in my eyes and sis handed me a tissue to keep from ruining my eye makeup. Then it was time to leave. I really needed to go at this time and told sis. She guided me, I guess that is a better term than manhandled me, into the ladies room. I could not believe the ladies room there was a line waiting for stalls. I had seen lines before in men's rooms but none that moved that slowly. Rebecca whispered in my ears to remember to sit to pee and to pull some tissue like to wipe before you get up to fix your clothes, and you need to powder your nose and reapply your lipstick after you wash your hands. After what seemed like 10 minutes I was able to enter the next to the last stall I remembered everything I was told and was able with some difficulty to take care of my business. Let me tell you that was a relief all the gear I was wearing really put a strain on my bladder. As I was powdering my nose and applying my lipstick another lady whispered in my ear saying that her period was early and asked if I had any tampons or panty shields. I handed her one of mine and I now knew why my sister included them in my purse. I waited outside for Rebecca to come out, which she did looking for me. She said she was sorry it took so long. It was with a lighter heart we talked as we headed the long way around the mall to where we were parked. We discussed the movie and I told her about the girl who borrowed a tampon from me. I guess I enjoyed myself more than any recent time I could remember. By the time we got to the car I was happy to get off my feet, these shoes were beginning to hurt a bit. Rebecca kept me talking all the way home and as we turned onto our street I realized another problem. Mom would be there. Sis looked at me and like she could read minds said, Mom would probably be in bed, 
but if she wasn't, don't worry, she'll be cool about it. We pulled into our drive and Rebecca told me to wait here let her check. She got out and went up to the front door and went in. About four minutes later, she came out and headed to the car. Mom also came out and I nearly had a heart attack. Sis headed to the car and got in the back seat and Mom got in behind the wheel. She was startled somewhat when she looked over and saw me and said, Paul, uh, is that you? I know I started to tear up. She saw this in the dim dome light of the car and got a tissue out of her purse. She then blotted my eyes as she looked at me, carefully so as not to mess up my makeup which she could clearly see. Don't worry honey. I am not mad at you. We will talk when we get back, she said looking crossly into the rear view mirror. She said this as much for my benefit, as for my sister sitting in the back seat. Where are we going I asked. Your sister left me a note asking if we could get a bite to eat when you two returned from the movie. I was bushwhacked by my sister again. It was amazing, but I still loved her even after all that happened or maybe because of all that she did, I wasn't sure which at the moment. We drove and mom talked to us about what we did and which movie we saw, what we thought of the movie. I had left out the photographer and the lingerie, but my dear little sister even spilled those beans. Mom said she would love to see those pictures and said that she would also like to see what we bought. We pulled into one of those all-night diner a good ways off our normal beaten path and parked. With loads of apprehension I met Mom and Sis at the back of the car. Mom looked at me up and down and told me to turn around. You look amazing dear. I love your hair and blouse and everything about you Paula. Thank you Mom, Sis picked it all out for me. I think she did a wonderful job don't you? She looks pretty good too, I said with more confidence than I really felt. Yes she does, but then she always tries to look her best. This though is the first time I have seen you looking so good. Mom, Paula and I had a great time together, I enjoyed going out with her. Mom held her arm out for me and I drew close to her as she placed her arm over my shoulder and then Rebecca's shoulder. We then headed into the diner and my heart skipped a beat. It felt good being together. We sat at a booth and mom sat across from us. The waitress took our drink orders and we looked at the menus. I made my choice and set the menu down folding my hands together on my lap to keep my elbows off the table. Rebecca reached over and took my right hand and held it. Mom then engaged us in conversation, I tried to follow their lead about what was acceptable with an older adult present, there was a significant difference than when it was just girls the same age. I tried using the talking skills that my sister had drilled into me, and I think mom was impressed. I was not usually this talkative and things usually had to be drug out of me one fact at a time. The waitress came and took our orders and commented on how nice we all looked and asked if we were all sisters. This brought giggles from all of us. Mom assured her that these two were her daughters. The waitress feigned surprise and said, Surely you are not old enough to have given birth to them. The waitress pointed at me and said, This one looks 18 and the other looks 16. The waitress left us and I said, That waitress is a little screwy, considering I am 13 and Rebecca is 16 then, don't you think? No. I don't think she is screwy at all as you put it, Paula. I think you look more mature and you sure act like it too, Paula. I am very impressed with you, and I love both of my daughters. Your sister has done a marvelous job with your makeup, at least I assume it was she at least who did it. A little mature for my tastes for my 13-year-old daughter, but it is still tastefully done and I would not be ashamed to be seen with you anywhere, dear. You are very attractive looking like that. I assume that those are my heels or they not, she said looking at my sister. Mine were way too small mom and the only shoes she could wear that fit her outfit were your sling back sandals. Even those are a tad small on her feet. I hope you don't mind, the only other shoes she could have worn were her trainers and that would have spoiled her look. In this case I agree with you, Rebecca and this one time it is okay but your sister just isn't ready for 4 inch heels. I bet your feet are kinda sore now Paula truthfully would you say. Yes mom, they are, but at the same time I love them very much, can you understand that? Yes Paula, I can. I know exactly what you mean. Now I have another question for you. Did your sister look out for you well? 
Do you have any complaints about the things she did to you and with you? Be truthful, dear, think before you answer. Yes, Paula, if I have done anything that you objected to or to embarrass you tell her. I looked my mom straight in the eyes and with a smile on my face said, No mom, Rebecca was very nice to me and although she put me in some strange situations, at least to me, she was very kind to me. I can honestly say I have learned a lot from being with her today and would look forward to doing it again sometime. Mom arched one of her eyebrows when she heard what I said and had a questioning expression on her face that turned into a big smile. I think you have learned a lot today, Paula. This might have been a very good experience for you, dear. It doesn't hurt to see how the other side lives for a change. You are more talkative and seem more mature. Mom, I have to be honest with you now. The reason this happened was my fault, Mom. You see, early this afternoon Jeff called and broke up with me to go out with Shelly. I was thoroughly pissed off Mom and threw the phone down. Paula came over to hug me and comfort me, and I lost it Mom and slapped her hard. So hard I knocked her down on the floor. I thought I had hurt her bad. She laid there for a few seconds and I fell to my knees to see if she were hurt, but after she had time to shake it off she got up. I left a welt on her face where I slapped her, so I covered it up with my makeup. I was amazed at how good she looked with just a little foundation on. She didn't do anything to deserve what I did to her. We talked a while and I apologized to her for striking her, and I offered to take her to a movie, my treat. I asked her if she would like to dress up and she happily agreed as long as she looked good enough to pass. Mom, she is gorgeous as you can see and I think she really liked it. Mom, it was wrong for me to strike her, and even though she didn't tell you, I could not live with myself unless I told you the truth. I stand ready to be punished, Mom. Yes, Rebecca, you do deserve to be punished for what you did, and I can guarantee you will be, but I am proud of you for telling me. It seems that Paula was not going to complain about it, but that type of behavior will not be tolerated, young lady. You both have made me proud today. We finished eating and mom took us to the ladies' room. I had to take care of my business and then Rebecca went next while I washed my hands, powdered my nose and fixed my lipstick under mom's watchful eyes. When I looked to mom, she smiled at me and then winked her eye at me in silent approval. When we were all done, we headed back to the table. Mom then told us that when we have a good waitress or waiter and they serve us well and complimented us and give us a good dining experience we always leave a good tip, we always leave a tip you understand but for good service we leave good tips. I was surprised when Mom left a $10 bill on the table. That was half the bill. Mom saw the expression on my face and said, weren't you pleased with her service? Didn't she work hard to make our meal a pleasure? Didn't she compliment all of us? You especially if my memory serves me right? You're right, Mom. She was very attentive and did a very nice job. I liked her. I never thought about it before. Thanks for teaching me, Mom. Mom hugged us and we headed to the register. The waitress who served us was at the register. She looked at us and smiled as we approached. My, you are lovely ladies. Your daughters are very pretty and you have raised them well. It was a pleasure serving you. I don't know why but her words touched me and I asked her if I could give her a hug. She had a look of surprise on her face but came over and hugged me. I gave her a peck on her cheek and thanked her. Rebecca and mom did the same for her and we paid our bill and went left. Paula, you are full of surprises today, I am proud of you. You probably made that waitress stay giving her a hug like that. They work so hard and sometimes are underappreciated for the work they do, and with that simple gesture you showed her that you really appreciated her. It was good you asked first also some people just aren't as touchy-feely as we are and might have been embarrassed had you just done it. You must understand though that a hug from Paul might not be as accepted by a female as one from Paula. I thought we would be headed home as it was about 11.30 p.m. but mom stopped at the local Walmart 24-hour store. She led us arm in arm into the store and to the shoe department. Mom, I found out where's a seven and a half narrow and after looking at my feet in her shoes she selected an eight and a half medium which Rebecca helped me put on. It too was an open-toed slingback sandal in black, but it only had a two and three quarters inch heel. It fit really well and felt good. 
she selected two more pair of heels, one a pump in red and another sandal in white, and a lady's athletic shoe that was white and had pink and blue on it. Then she led us to the lingerie section and asked what size and I replied 32B and size 5. She asked what I liked that I saw and I pointed out things that I liked. She picked out several bras, panties, half slips, full slips, a dozen pair of pantyhose and nighties I mentioned and some that she liked and some that my sister wanted me to get. Then in the clothing section she had me pick out some athletic clothes, two tank tops, a sports bra, a warm-up suit. We then selected several nice skirts in a larger waist than the one I had one but that were a slim fit, and a skirt that had a little more flair in it. We then selected a bunch of tops and blouses and two pair of ladies' jeans and two slacks and three dresses including what she called an LBD or little black dress and girl speak. They had me try on everything but the panties. Rebecca helped me change and mom looked at and approved most of it and rejected a couple of things. She then asked me to explain why she accepted certain things and rejected others. I tried to the best of my limited experience. She corrected me when I was wrong and complimented me when I was right. She then took us over to cosmetics and bought a whole bunch of stuff explaining what it was for, but it was getting late, I was tired and it did not sink in at the time. Then over to jewelry for bangles, bracelets, rings, necklaces and about a dozen different pair of pierced earrings. I was amazed at how much money she spent on me and started to object, but I was overruled. We filled the trunk of the car and headed to our home finally. My poor dogs were tired. I thought I would get some rest when I got home, but it was not in the cards, at least not immediately. This whole thing about dressing as a girl seemed to have a life of its own. It scared me but at the same time I was not sure but I seemed to enjoy it. I also was halfway sure I wanted to continue. At home finally at about 1 a.m. we unloaded the car and brought everything to the living room. Mom led us to her room and asked Rebecca to clean off my face. When she got the makeup off, my face mom could see the welt on my face. It looked a little less red and angry but there was no doubt what had hit me. There were a couple of places where a bruise was evident but it did not look too bad to me. Mom turned to Rebecca and first said, First let's say that whatever Paula put on today is now hers except for the shoes which really don't fit and were not yours to give in the first place. Okay? What I realized was that I wore Rebecca's best blouse and her favorite skirt which cost a pretty penny. It hit Rebecca where she lived. Second, your allowance goes to Paula for the next 30 days. Her allowance was twice mine because she was expected to buy her necessities like pantyhose and makeup from it. I thought I would have to help her on the sly. Rebecca had winced as mom pronounced her judgments, tears formed in her eyes. Thirdly you are grounded for the next thirty days, and with a glint in her eye, and help your sister learn all about being a girl. If it means getting out of the house so be it as long as she is with you and you treat her well and only while she is dressed as a girl. You will not threaten or force her to dress up, but if she wants to you will teach her and look out for her. What you do for lessons are up to you but I expect to see results. You have done a good job. I expect you to continue it. I will also give you hints about things she needs to learn. Come July we are going on a vacation for three weeks and either Paul or Paula may go with us, it's her choice. It may be hard for both to go but even that is an option. I realized that for my sister to have a good time this summer Paula was going to have to be around. I love my sister but I might have to make her sweat a little. Rebecca hugged me close and said, Paul, I am so sorry I hurt you. I promise that if you forgive me I will make it up to you. If you want to learn to be Paula, I will do my best to teach you to be the best girl I can, but if you don't I will sit patiently in my room and not complain. There is no excuse for what I did. Teach me to be as loving as you are. That last comment from Sis brought another raised eyebrow from Mom. She had not realized the truth she had heard before then that Paul was a more loving child than Rebecca had been. He clearly had feminine characteristics that she had been blind to. This could be a win-slash-win situation for her children. She made a mental note to talk to their doctor on Monday. Mom then told Rebecca that she wanted to see the purchases that she and I made at the lingerie shop and asked her to go get them. Rebecca jumped up and hurried down to find them. I turned to Mom and told her that I was proud of Sis, and I still loved her. 
Mom just hugged me. I can't remember ever being hugged so much, but I am not complaining. I like it. Mom started unbuttoning my blouse as Sis came back with two bags from the lingerie shop. I started to discard the blouse, but Sis made me fold it neatly and lay it on the couch, the same with the skirt, saying girls don't dump their clothes, especially their nice clothes on the floor Paula. That is when I realized that school had begun for me. I was learning lessons that I actually loved coming from my favorite people. I was glad to get all those clothes off they were fun but I needed rest and comfort. When I wiggled my tits at mom, she and sis both cracked up. I took my things I selected and started to head to the bathroom and mom said, where are you going we are all girls here. I stopped and pulled my blue panties off and pulled my yellow panties up tucking myself between my legs as I had done earlier. I then put my bra on and showed mom. Sis was taking her clothes off and dressing too in the matching bra and panties. I slipped the nighty over my head. Sis didn't usually wear a bra at night when she slept but she put hers on and her nighty and panties. Mom looked at and felt the material and said, I really liked your choice Rebecca. I didn't choose these mom, Paula did and I liked it so I got one to match hers. Rebecca go to your room, let me talk to Paula for a few minutes. Sis headed up the stairs to her room. Mom turned to me and said, we need to have a mother slash daughter talk. Paul, I don't mind you being Paula. I think you are a beautiful child no matter how you choose to present yourself. I just want you to know why I feel this way. I had a boyfriend many years ago. It was not your typical boyfriend slash girlfriend relationship. He was more like a girlfriend. He had an identity issue. He always was envious of me and my girlfriends, and for the longest time I could not understand him. One day when I was about 13, he came over to my place and I was feeling quite mischievous. I dressed him like your sister did to you. He didn't complain much. It was just a token resistance. He was quite fetching dressed like that and he quite enjoyed it. He confided that he liked dressing as a girl and admitted that he had felt that way for a long time. We played dress up several times since that first adventure, but we were caught by my mom. She hit the ceiling and called his mom over. His mom apologized profusely to my mom and tore into her son. She marched him half-dressed in my stockings, panties, bra, and slip all the way home. He had to walk dressed like that for two blocks. It was about five in the evening and the streets were full of people. She embarrassed him terribly. Once she got him home, she made him go to his room and wait for his father to get home and told him that he better not take off those clothes or wash off the makeup. When his father got home, they called for him to come downstairs, but when he didn't come, they went to his room to get him. It was too late for him though he had taken one of my stockings and tied it around his throat and the doorknob and hung himself. He left a letter to me and told me not to blame myself for this and that his last few days with me were the happiest days of his life. It is a cruel world out there Paula. I don't ever want you to feel that helpless or unloved. If this is just a game to you then we all can play and have fun, but if this if this is something more to you, you can trust me to still love and support you. Whatever direction you take your secret is safe with us and if at some point you want to live as a girl we will be there for you. Life is too important Paula don't ever despair to the point of taking your life, you are too precious to me. Will you keep this between you and me Paula? I shook my head yes. I didn't know what to say tears flowed from my eyes. I threw my arms around mom's neck and sat in her lap. She rocked me in her arms and stroked my hair. We stood after we had a good cry and she led me upstairs to Sis's room. Mom walked over to Sis and just hugged us both. Mom then asked, Rebecca, Paul's room is so masculine that I don't think Paula would be comfortable. If you two can be good girls, can Paula sleep with you? Treat it like a sleepover. This request caught me and Rebecca off guard. I looked to Rebecca. We had not slept together since I was eight years old. Rebecca thought for a second and then nodded to me. Mom popped me firmly on my butt as I walked towards Sis, and she feigned innocence when I turned towards her putting my hands on my hips and pouting. We all broke out giggling. Sis then taught me how to take my makeup off and taught me how to take care of my skin. 
We didn't do many of the things girls usually do at sleepovers and not for Rebecca's lack of trying. Sis had me sit next to her on her bed and turned me so my legs went over her lap and hugged me and rocked me in her arms. I just fell asleep and slumped on her lap. Rebecca just stroked my hair until she too fell asleep. Paula had some strange dreams that night. The first night he ever spent in girls' clothing. He dreamed of satin and lace, of dresses and skirts, of long silky hair, of things so foreign to him. He was happy dreaming of things so feminine. Paul slowly woke. Things did not seem right. There were arms holding him and he could feel a girl spooned at his back. He opened his eyes and realized he was in his sister's room and remembered about the previous day. It felt so good to be held. Looking at the light coming in the window he could tell the day was well past morning. He rolled on his back under his sister's arm and looked at her. Even early in the morning she was so pretty. He reached over and kissed her on her cheek and got out of bed. Paul headed to the bathroom he always used and took care of his business sitting in the fashion of girls. Yesterday had been so strange, so different, maybe it would not go away. He took a small portion of toilet paper and dried himself and flushed. He took care to tuck himself back between his legs leaving a smooth front. He stood in front of the mirror and looked at himself dressed in a yellow silk nighty, long dark auburn hair hung past his shoulders. There was only a small area on his face that was bruised below his left eye. He washed his face and brushed his teeth and brushed his long auburn hair till it fell into place. Paula returned to his sister's room as she was sitting up in bed. She smiled when she saw him. He sat on the bed next to her. Morning Paula did you sleep well? I was glad we slept together. It felt good sleeping next to someone for a change. I know, sis. I slept well and had some strange dreams, don't remember much of them but it felt kinda good. I see you brushed your hair little sis. It looks good on you. I am glad you are part of our family. I want to teach you all about girls if you want me to. Rebecca got up and handed a robe to Paul the same one he had worn the day before. Sis told him that it was his since he had worn it yesterday and that was mom's rule. He pulled it on and realized that it was shorter than his nighty. Rebecca pulled on a powder blue robe and held out her hand to Paula. Together we padded down to the kitchen. Rebecca started breakfast and Paula helped her. She had not done much cooking, the most he had done was make a sandwich or boil some hot dogs. Now he paid attention to what Rebecca. She had him do several things to make breakfast. Mixing the ingredients for a pancake batter as his sister handed them to him. Sis fired up the griddle as Paula got the batter ready for cooking. Paula poured several circles of batter on the grill till there was no more room. The pancakes started to rise and bubble and then Paula flipped them. Two more rounds of hot cakes then Paula started the bacon six strips. With the bacon ready, Rebecca made the coffee and set the table. She then sent Paula up to wake mom. Paula plopped on the bed next to her mom, who woke with quite a start. Oh Paul, a good to see you this morning. How did you sleep dear? I slept well mom. Thank you for everything you have done for me. Breakfast is ready and waiting for you. Mom got out of bed went to the bathroom and came out minutes later putting a robe on. Together they went to the kitchen where Rebecca had everything ready. The girls talked while they ate Paula turned to whoever was speaking and paid attention while she ate. She added to the conversation at points, remembering to not speak with food in her mouth, and spoke her feelings confidently. She felt a new camaraderie with her family, they were close before but this was like three sisters talking and having fun. Rebecca, Paula, take the bags in the living room up to Rebecca's room, we will see about making you room there to put your things up. Paula and her sister grabbed the many bags they had just left the previous day and headed to the girls' room sitting them on the bed. Sis went to her dresser and started rearranging her things there. She had a large dresser and she found that she could make enough room for Paula's things there easy. The girls then started to sort, arrange and put up Paula's under things and such. They then turned to the closet. This was going to be a problem. Rebecca went through her things that were hanging and sorted them into three piles. First pile were the things she wanted to keep for herself, 
then the second pile, were things that might fit Paula and look good on her, then there was a pile that she would give away. She had Paula go through the last pile and check to see if there was anything there she would like to try. Paula tried on several items and Rebecca would explain what would work or not work for her and why. Paula kept one dress and a skirt from that pile. They then went through the pile Rebecca wanted Paula to keep, she explained why they were good for Paula and how they would work together with her other things. They rejected some of the clothes there but kept most of them. Rebecca then went through her pile and showed her how they went together with her things and showed Paula which things she could borrow from Rebecca's section and which clothes she wanted for herself. Paula told her she would respect her things and her wishes. They then hung the clothes that Rebecca had pulled from her closet. Sis still had the lion's share of the space but there was sufficient space that they may be able to get the rest of Paula's new clothes hung. Rebecca then made room on her vanity for Paula's makeup. Sharing her domain had been hard and at the same time she was glad. Paula was a real sweetheart and took everything in stride. She wondered how she would have done if their positions had been reversed. She had not intended things going this far and was having to evaluate how she felt about this. Her comfort zone was most definitely being stretched, and she felt it was for the most part a good thing. Finally in the early afternoon they got everything put away. The girls took turns showering and Rebecca helped Paula dress and add makeup. She worked very slowly explaining what she was doing and why, making sure Paula could see what she was doing. Paula could see herself transform from a cute girl to a beautiful young lady. Not as sexy as the day before but makeup she could wear most anywhere, refined but youthful. Paula then selected some underwear a white satin and lace bra and panty set, a camisole, half-slip and pantyhose and dressed and carefully folded her sleepwear. Paula then put on a Kelly green rayon blouse and a navy cotton pencil skirt with a small kick pleat in the back that came to two inches above her knee and a pair of navy pumps with a three-inch heel. The skirt was tight at the hem and limited her ability to walk. She was forced to take shorter more feminine steps and swing her hips more. Sis dressed in a white charmeuse blouse and a green chiffon skirt, with white strappy sandals with three-inch heels. The girls sought out and found Mom sitting in the living room watching TV. She looked at her daughters as they approached and was impressed. She looked closely at Paula and told them the makeup was much better for a girl her age. She commented that the clothing they selected looked very nice. She said that she was shocked that Paula was dressed in such a form-fitting skirt but that it looked very good on her. She also told Paula to take care of that wig it is a real human hair wig and it is quite expensive. Well dressed like that we need to go out, go get your purses girls while I get dressed. We got our purses and loaded them with and the powder and lipsticks we would need for repairs. They then returned to the living room where Paula learned just what mom had meant by her skirt. Rebecca just had to giggle as Paula maneuvered around trying to sit properly in her skirt. Rebecca gave her hints and encouragement as she practiced. Mom was watching this from around the corner upstairs. It was a skirt she selected at the store for Paula just for this reason. Standing was a real chore for Paula because the skirt's tightness did not allow much movement for the legs. Rebecca was offering no assistance except for moral support. Mom was impressed with her girls. Paula wouldn't give up and Rebecca was being a good teacher. This was going to work out very good. She knew Rebecca had an anger problem. It was not that she got angry often, but when she did she could be a holy terror. She was impulsive and did not share well. Paula had always had a certain sweetness and was always ready to share, but was often hurt, she needed not a suit of armor to blunt all attacks, but maybe just a shield to protect her from most of the harm. Her kids were learning discipline, not as a punishment but as a way of life. Both of her kids could come out of this being much better persons, accepting people that were different from the norm but who were still good people. She might even be able to bring her friend Frances home to meet her kids. She hoped that her children could understand her relationship with Frances. She had kept it very discreet but maybe that could be changing soon. The kids did not need all the details, but maybe they could accept that she could love another person, even if it was another woman. She blushed as she thought of her friend-slash-lover. It was not that she was a lesbian, but more that she was bisexual and a woman could be more tender and caring than most men, except for her Paula. 
If Paula could just stay through the summer, she would not force Paula to stay, but she would accommodate her if she chooses to. She would certainly make it attractive for Paula to stay, Rebecca seemed to be doing her best to do it also. She would talk to Rebecca about Paula. Mom went to the girls' room and got two things for Paula, a waist nipper and a padded girdle. She needed a little more shape. Returning to the living room she had Paula take off her blouse and skirt. Paula groaned as she saw what Mom intended for her, but she was very compliant, and she had to admit that it really helped her image as a girl. She realized that the already tight skirt fit better at the waist but her poor tush was being squeezed. She practiced sitting and standing again and found that she could do it very well. Her face beamed with pride as she looked at Mom and Sis who were applauding her. Well kids let's go to the car, I think we need to go to the mall. Paula doesn't know what shop till you drop means yet. I think she is about to learn, don't you mom? Paula just groaned, if she had to try on a bunch of clothes with this skirt it was going to be a long day. They headed to the garage and Paula attempted to step in the front seat. She had to push her but into the car and sit then swing her legs in. Keeping her knees together was not an issue the skirt saw to that. She scooted next to mom and Rebecca got in next to her. The two kids held hands as mom drove. The banter was light and feminine, Paula joined in with them, she was picking up girl talk very easily and fit in with the conversation. They reached the mall and they held hands with Paula in the middle and strode into the mall. There were a hundred stores in the mall and seventy of them catered to women. They went from storefront to storefront stopping at one kiosk and another. They all tried clothes on. Paula and Rebecca even ganged up on mom and got her to dress younger. She was surprised at Paula's sense of fashion. She bought the skirt and blouse Paula had picked out for her. It made her look like a sister to the girls. Rebecca saw a nail salon and tried to get them in there, saying it would really help Paula. Paula if you get your nails done in there you need to understand that it will be impossible for Paul to come back for a while. There is no changing back and forth. I would expect you to remain this way for at least six weeks. The nails can come off but you can't replace them back on. I think it would be good but it is your choice, I won't make you do it. I want you to really think about it before you make up your mind. Paula walked off for a few seconds and appeared to be really thinking about it. Mom and Rebecca gave her plenty of room, but in the end she came back smiled, took their hands and headed into the nail salon. Mom gave the manicurist instructions for half an inch nails for them all and helped select polish for each of them. They were each led to a different station and their manicurists took care of them. It was a new experience for Paula. She had a cute Asian girl who looked no older than she was. Her English was very good and her accent was so sexy, but it was her smile that made her heart skip a beat. She never felt like this before, yes she did like girls but that was as Paul. She had never gone out with one. The girl knew her business and enjoyed working on Paula. She too was affected by Paula. She had worked with many girls and some girl wannabes but she never felt like this before. She gave Paula detailed instructions on the care of her nails and told her to come back for refills when the base of the nails were grown out enough to be too noticeable. After she finished with her nails she took a good hand lotion and massaged Paula's hands and continued talking to her. They were lost in each other's eyes. Um are you through Han, mom intoned. Oh so sorry ma'am, we were just having a good talk. Please do come back in for refills. My name is Kylie, I enjoyed helping you, she said handing Paula her business card. Paula for the first time glanced at her new nails and said, thank you Kylie, they are gorgeous. I really like them. She stood and reached out and hugged Kylie. Kylie looked shocked but quickly returned the hug and had a big smile on her face when they parted. Rebecca watched the girl as they left, she was fanning herself and her face was flushed. Looking at Paula, she noticed that she too was flushed. Looking at mom who was looking at her they both raised eyebrows. After paying the cashier mom inspected everyone's nail and pronounced them excellent. Mom gave us each a couple of bucks and instructed us to tip our operator. Paula was very distracted and seemed to be walking on air. It seemed that Mom and Rebecca were trying to see how much they could get away with while Paula was on cloud nine. 
She came to ground when she thought she had told her mom yes to getting a corset. Paula stopped and turned to Rebecca and whispered in her ear, Did I just tell mom that I would wear a corset? You sure did Paula, and here it comes girl, Rebecca giggled. I want all three of us fitted for corsets, mom told the sales lady. It was Rebecca's turn to blanch hearing this. Paula gave her sister a peck on the cheek, and giggled. At least I am not going to suffer alone, Paula said. Rebecca made a fist and put it at the base of Paula's nose and said, Keep it up sis and I will be an only child, but the smile on her face told a different story. The sales lady brought three corsets after taking all of our measurements. She helped Rebecca as mom helped me. Groans could be heard as the laces were being tightened. The older women were showing no mercy to us. Mom looked at us and said we will take them and then the women helped the girls dress. We got some measure of satisfaction though as the sales lady tightened mom's corset. Mom's waist actually needed the most attention of us, but the effect they had was marvelous on them. We all had to go to the ladies' room when we left that shop. I took the longest to get getting unencumbered enough to use the facilities and to get myself together afterwards. We then powdered our noses and repaired our lipstick. The food court was a good place to stop for a few minutes, so we each ordered the type of food we liked and not surprisingly in appropriate quantities. Mom finally broke the ice with Paula. That was a nice girl at the nail salon Paula, you two seem to get along well don't you think? Ah uh, yes she was, I liked her very much mom. I hope to see her again sometime. I think she wants to see you too sis. You had her in vapors Paula. She blushed when you hugged her. You sure surprised me. That's all I can say. I don't understand mom, before no girl ever made me feel that way, and I don't think I have ever done that to a girl before. Why now and why with me dressed like this? Would she like me as a guy or will I have to look like a girl, will she hate me because I am pretending to be a girl? I can't answer your questions Paula, only time will tell. You can only be the best person you are. I think you are a very special person. I love you no matter how you are and if she and you are meant to be, she too will love you for what you are.